Hey everybody, it is Kendall Lanise and welcome to Kendall Lanise Live. This is my panel series. I'm so excited uh, to do this show today. November, I'm giving you panels of information. If you're just tuning in for the first time, this is my YouTube channel. Do me a favor and subscribe. It's so important that you do that as I grow my page. Um, so this channel is all about education, elevation, and entertainment, and about changing the narrative when it comes to Black people. You know, what you may think may not always be, and hopefully I can do my part uh, to change that narrative a bit. So I'm so excited bringing you these doctors because, you know, you hear it, brains or beauty, brains over beauty. Well, my guests today have brains and they're beautiful. Did you see the flyer? Hello. So we are going to um, get some questions. We're going to um, have some fun and we're going to talk to these doctors. This is what you need to know about your own body. Health is wealth. This is Kendall and East Live. All right. So I'm going to give you a moment to share this with your friends and family, share it on social media. Let's do that for a moment. Let's take a moment to share this. And then we're going to have my guests come on. So let me even share as you share because we are all the way live. Somebody you know may have a question. So let's take a moment to do that. All right. Now, without further ado, let me introduce my guests one by one. I'm going to give you a little information about them, but I want them to be able to take a minute or two to introduce themselves to you. Who do I want to start with? All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Well, we're going to, I was talking to one of the doctors earlier, Dr. Sanza, when she comes on, we were like, hmm, we have a doctor for every stage. So of course, the first stage is when your parent is pregnant with you, and that would be an OBGYN, right? So we are going to welcome, I want to make sure I say the name correctly. Sandra Higginbotham, MD, board certified OBGYN and America Board of Integrative and Holistic Medicine, functional medicine provider, founder of and the owner of the Women's Health Solution. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Kendall. You did pretty good. You did pretty oh. good. Thank you. Chandra. Well, Chandra. Sha is it Chandra? Sh Chandra with the heart C. Chandra. Chandra. And it's very okay. See, it's very important for me to say your name correctly because people call me Kendall, Kenya, everything. So <laughs> and it's Kendall. So I, I'm very, I want to be very specific with your name. So Chandra. 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 Yeah. Got it. But that's All why right. I changed the, the, the title. People just call me Dr. Higgy, you know, because of that. I just say just Dr. Higgy. Dr. Higgy, but we don't say your name right on this. Okay, side. work it. <laughs> work it, lady. <laughs> this is Chandra, but Dr. Higgy, that's kind of cute. I like that. <laughs> Next, we are going to start, uh, finish off, or I should say, continue on with the pediatrician. Uh, Dr. Maya Walton, MD, board certified pediatrician, functional medicine provider, and Medical Academy of Pediatric Special Needs, MAPS, provider, co-founder of the M Center for Pediatric Wellness. Maya Walton, where are you, Miss Maya? <laughs> She's waving. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You are, it's a joy. My pleasure. Welcome. All right. So, who do we have next? All right. Well, we're going to kind of 
put your partners in crime up there. Well, not in crime. We're not doing no crime. (laughs) Partners in health. Yes. Uh, Dr. Monica Beckham, PhD, board certified natural wellness practitioner and functional medicine certified health coach and co-founder of the M Center for Pediatric Wellness. Dr. Monica Beckham. Let's see here. Hello. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you for joining me. All right. So who do we have next? All right. So Dr. is, and I want to make sure, Serana, because it looks like Serena, but I practice Serana. Hopefully I'm correct. Uh, Satcher, MD, board certi- uh, certified internal medicine, rehab medicine, sports medicine, certified functional medicine provider, founder of and owner of Treat Yourself to Health. I love that. All right, let's see. Welcome. Thank you so much. Just all this beauty and one look in one little uh, Hollywood square. <laughs> so, so my first name is Serena. Serena, and you know what? Uh, that is at look like you don't know, but that is absolutely correct. I was saying that Dr. Sandra can uh, vouch for me. I was saying Serena, and now I said, "Yep, I see." I shouldn't have looked at the spelling. Serena, welcome. Thank you, thank you. But it's okay. I've been answering to everything all my no, life. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you by your correct name because that's your name. So I don't want to uh, dim it down. All right. So who do we have next? My girl, Doctor Sanza Curtis, ND, uh, ne- uh, neuropathic doctor and physician's assistant, and certified functional medicine provider, founder and owner of three. D wellness, my girl, Dr. Sanza. What's up, y'all? Hello, hey, Dr. Sanza. <laughs> Hello, welcome. She's Hello. not. She's not uh, new to this. She's true to this. I've interviewed her twice, so this is my girl. Thank you for rallying the troops for me. I appreciate you. You know that. My pleasure. All right, last but definitely not least, I feel like this is like a basketball team. You know how when they call out and everybody runs out like woo 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 woo. So she's still sitting on the bench. So we're gonna get her up here too, Dr. Naima Ola Tonji. Okay, hopefully I said that right. Is a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, founder of Elevate Family Chiropractic, certified in pregnancy and pediatric care. Dr. Naima, let's get her up here. What's up? (laughs) (laughs) Now you had such a challenge with all of these names. I commend to you because our names are like, what? What are you doing? Why would you do that? (laughs) My black folks. (laughs) I thank you so much. And thank you, Naima. Um, I appreciate that. So I want to see. Who I, I, okay, I want to make sure. Okay, so they can, I said the full names. You have Dr. Higgy and you have Dr. Naima. Okay, first names. So how do you want me to refer to you as I call on you? For me, Dr. Naima is good. Okay, everybody? Dr. Higgy is good. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. Serena. Okay. All right, so I want to take a moment to just go through, and I want you to give about a minute, minute and a half about yourself. <clears throat> so tell the people who you are. I know I introduced you, but who you are and where your practice is, starting with Dr. Higgy. All right. Well, thank you, Kendall, and thank you for the invite. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, so I practice in Houston, Texas, right? Um, and I started my solo practice in 2003 and hence the women's health solution 
the way I say, I'm the only solution for women's health. Anyway, <laughs> that's why I be. Um, and I have a, I practice functional medicine um, um, and conventional medicine, but with a twist of integrative um, tenets. Just a little bit, my passion is to work with women preconceptually. I don't want to get into the, the body of um, what we're going to talk about, but um, more women die in America than any other developed country in the world. Um, and that's a passion. Um, that's not acceptable. So as such, I utilize lifestyle optimization in my practice of medicine. So I love in, that. In, in, in a nutshell. I love that. And we're going to definitely get into all that. And I heard Dr. Sanza was telling me some things about you, how you give it straight, no chaser. So maybe <laughs> you'll share some of that uh, with us today. All right. So Dr. Maya. So as you mentioned, I'm a board certified pediatrician and I do focus on children with special needs. My son regressed into autism right before he turned two. Mm -hmm. And so that started me on a journey of trying to figure out what was actually going on underneath the surface and eventually did enough research and got some questions answered that I recalled having in medical school and residency about how certain things were connected and no one really provided an answer for that and started to see him begin to grow and heal and develop. And we were um, introduced, Dr. Monica and I were introduced by a mutual friend because she was having similar challenges with her son. I don't want to steal the thunder, um, but we started helping each other and then helping a friend and a friend of a friend. And we said, wait, we need an infrastructure to do this in an organized fashion. This is clearly what we're called to do to help I other people that. like ours. I love that. And I love the fact that you're working together also, I love that. All right, Mr. Uh, Miss Doctor, Miss Doctor, the good Doctor <laughs> Sansa, uh, if you can share about you and your practice well, and where you are. I'm Miss Sansa. Um, I'm a naturopath and a PA, and I'm in Roswell, Georgia. And um, actually, medicine found uh, natural medicine found me. My great grandmother was a herbalist and a midwife. And because of my own challenges and my family challenges, I came around full circle. So got trained in functional medicine, met all these, most of these beautiful ladies at the IFM conferences. And um, we are kind of patients of each other. So we just kind of, this is my crew. So when you ask me, could I get a crew? I said, girl, please, I got a crew for you. <laughs> so that's who we have. And really I focus on my whole thing is teaching people how to tap into their innate ability to, for their body to heal itself. Our body has all the things to do. We just got to get it proper environment. And my goal is to heal 1 million guts before I leave. I'm also known as the gut doctor. Well, yep. Yeah. And I, and you know, I know a thing about guts. Um, a lot of people don't know, but I am a colon cancer survivor a little about a year, not even a year and a half. So about oh, over a little wow. over a year. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank You're a you. thriver. You're not a survivor. You're a yes, thriver. A thriver. Yep. You corrected me before. A thriver for sure. So thank you. So gut health is extremely important to me. Just health in general. And the reason why I said um, what you don't know about your body, because this is your expertise, all of you. So you'll be able to teach some things to a lot of the uh, viewers. And we have a lot of people on right now. And that's really what I want for people to really understand how health is wealth. You know, people talk about wealth being money and tangible things, but you can have all the money in the world. And if your health is declining, what does that even mean or matter? Exactly. You know? All right. So we have Dr. Serena up next. I said that right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank welcome. you for inviting me. You're welcome. My pleasure. Here with all these ladies. So <clears throat> I started out in internal medicine at one of the Harvard hospitals and I trained at Jocelyn Diabetes. I was interested in the heart and I was interested in the endocrinology aspect of internal medicine. But then I figured out when I went out and worked in the world for a year that I was frustrated because medicine was teaching people to be dependent on medications. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So then I found physical medicine and rehab, and that was definitely a step up and it's more holistic. 
And patients were coming back and thanking us for helping them to get back to their baseline. So I got a lot of reward out of that. But then I took it a step further when I had my own health issue with fibroids. Mm -hmm. And I had to figure out how to rebalance my body. I actually, like the way I found out I had fibroids was because I was running in a triathlon or I was mm -hmm. participating in a triathlon. And I had to stop to use the bathroom. And I had done a bunch of races before. I never had to stop to use the bathroom. So after I had this huge fibroid that was the size of a softball taken out, um, that's when I decided that I had to figure out how to stop the rest of them from growing. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I went into this back in 2004. Yeah. Um, and in my practice, um, I focus on the gut like Sansa. But right now, my passion is long COVID and helping people that have dizziness and some of the neurological features of long COVID to recover. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tough nut, but, you know, we have training that's different from conventional medicine. Mm -hmm. So conventional medicine really doesn't have much to offer people that have long COVID. They're still trying to research medis medications. Meanwhile, I'm proud of my specialty in physical medicine and rehab because yeah. we're actually helping to get together the consensus, yeah. like the treatments. Yeah. Um, but it's more from the rehab approach. Yeah. So the holistic approach of functional medicine, integrative medicine, lifestyle medicine can help these people to be whole and get their lives back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad as you're doing it. So let me just give for, for everyone watching. Um, this is interactive. So if you see me look down to the audience or you see me over here typing, uh, I'm, I have live comments over here and over here. So if you see me look, I know some people may not know how this works, especially my mom. She might be like, you know, she's going to give me my notes at the end. You were looking down. You weren't looking because I got to tell her how this new thing works. <laughs> but as you were talking, Dr. Serena, I was reaching, I was texting a long COVID patient or thriver, I should say, uh, who is having difficulty now and nothing is working. So I wanted to make sure she was on here when you said that to, to, to circle back around to that. And I want to just thank everyone who is commenting. I see you. Uh, gut check. Uh, Dr. Sanza Curtis, everyone. It says, congratulations, Kendall. What a great opportunity to speak on health. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Good evening, ladies. Um, so we have a lot of uh, interaction. If you guys have a question watching, make sure you drop it in there and we'll try to get to your question. Up next, Dr. Monica. Hi. Um, so my story is kind of a hodgepodge of, of Dr. Serena and Dr. Maya's. Um, I had a slew of medical issues kind of growing up in general, even into adulthood and dealing with infertility and then dealing with a very challenging pregnancy with blood clots that they couldn't figure out. And mm -hmm. my background is a PhD. I'm a researcher by trade. So mm -hmm. I dig, I find the answers, I put pieces together. That's always been my nature. So I was in the hospital trying not to die with this baby and finding researchers and finding articles and sending stuff to my, you know, my perinatologist and we're trying to figure yeah. things out together. I'm like, did y'all research this? So that's always kind of been my nature to dig deeper than what conventional medicine could offer to help yeah. figure out what was going on with me. And then when my son was a couple of years old, we were starting to experience some challenges with him and I wasn't getting the answers I needed from my pediatrician who had yeah. pretty much nothing to offer. So again, starting to dig deep and using my research background to investigate that there really are so many answers out there yeah. The, the information is there. A lot of people just don't know where to look, how yeah. to understand it. And a lot of traditional providers, that's not what they're taught. And then they don't find the information that actually does exist out there. And so it does take a functional or a holistic or an integrative practitioner to put those pieces together and really help lead people to healing. So yeah. that's how I got into all of this. I love that. And where are you, where's your practice? We are in the suburbs of Atlanta. We are in mm -hmm. Roswell, Georgia. 
Okay. Yeah. And Dr. Sarah and I was talking there, you were talking about um, fibroids. Oh, my God, I know all too well about fibroids. I had terrible, terrible fibroids um, that was pushing out my uterus and I looked like I was five or six months pregnant. Um, they were in there and one attached to my fallopian tube. Like they, the people don't even understand the severity and the pain and everything else that you have to deal with with that. And then listening to Dr. Monica, I'm listening to all of you and be like, okay, I, I can relate to that. Okay, of course, OBGYN, pediatrics. Okay, chiropractic up next. Dr. Naima, I started seeing a chiropractor when I was in high school. Back in the day, I'm from South Jersey. And back in the day in gym, we would have to bend over and they would have to check the spine to see if there was a curvature. Mm -hmm. And I have an extra uh, vertebrae. And um, I found out, um, even though I'm 21, I found out in 1988 when I was in high school, okay? <laughs> you do the math. These are not mathematicians here, okay? So hopefully they won't find out. But Your um, math is math. <laughs> right, right. My math, my math is math, special math. That's what I'm do what I have, but this is the old math. <laughs> but in 1988, I discovered um, that I had um, scoliosis. And then later on, I discovered that my mom had it. And then later on, I discovered that my grandmother had it. And had it not really been uh, for high school and getting checked, I don't, they don't even do that anymore. My daughters were in high school. They didn't even do that. But that's how I found out. So this is Dr. Naima, everybody. Hey, I am so happy to be here. And I'm really happy that you mentioned um, your particular shared your story. I think one of the things that we often and I think all of us can attest to that come up against is the misnomers and myths around what it is that we do. But more importantly, and more influential is other practitioners and other healthcare providers not understanding what it is that we do. And they perpetuate myths and fears onto other parents. And it's really unfortunate. Um, mm -hmm. I, I practice also just up the street from uh, the M Center and uh, 3D Wellness. And it's been such a blessing to have colleagues that are so nearby that we can just have a conversation and reinforce how important it is the work that we're doing because sometimes we don't get that just from our community of um, people who just, you know, patients who want to get better, but they there's some fear that sort of is in between their healing and, you know, what they're being told from other healthcare providers. And it was a little bit like that for me, how I became a chiropractor is, my 13 year old son at the time had a health crisis, only we had no idea that it was related to um, the spine. Certainly, I had no idea what a chiropractor even was. And I had been in the holistic space for probably the better part of 15 years. Hmm. And I was not only unfamiliar with what a chiropractor does, but when it was suggested six months after this kid had been suffering severely with migraines, hmm. when I um, met a chiropractor and she said what, you know, she did. And I just kind of smiled because I didn't know, you know, what, how a chiropractor could even help. And when she suggested that I bring my son to her, I just thought that it was ludicrous but I didn't share that with her. Like I kept yeah. my thoughts to myself and it was an entirely different reason uh, why, how we ended up in her office. But she did ask me this one question that I thought that was so pivotal for me in the moment. Uh, he had been suffering severely for six months. And mm -hmm. when she said, you have tried everything else, mm. well, it can this hurt? And I just thought like, no truer words could have been true. We had run the gamut of all the holistic pra practitioners. And then we went on to the pediatrician and then the orthopedist and then the neurologist. And we just ended up with a whole bunch of prescriptions, yeah. and a bunch of side effects and no solution. He still had the migraines. And when we finally um, 
were able to get him that very first adjustment, watching him transform from this kid that was in so much pain that yeah. light was just really difficult for him to tolerate and to walking out of that office on his very first adjustment and saying he felt great was such a significant relief yeah. to me as a mom that yeah. I changed my entire trajectory of where I was going professionally. Mm. Oh, wow. And it's pretty amazing. Today we had an, a family for the very first time with a different crisis mm. for their son, but they were thinking, how can a chiropractor help? My son has severe constipation. And after his adjustment today, before he left the office, his bowels moved like that's that's wow. huge. that is so huge and i i think that it's such a joy that we get to sort of collaborate and have this conversation tonight for all of the people who would not necessarily think that we can provide you know solutions and resources to what their families are suffering with i think it's pretty amazing Absolutely. Well said. And you just taught me when you when you said it, it made total sense to me. But before you said it, I would have never thought that bowel movement and constipation, if you just get adjusted. But when you said it, it made it was so logical. It made so much sense. So and thank you for that. This is why I really wanted to, to have this panel. You know what I mean? Because so many people don't know or they don't know the questions to ask or they may not have insurance and will, or they're scared to go to the doctors or they have the white, white coat syndrome, all of that. So that's why I wanted to create a, a space here um, to talk about these things. So thank you so much. OK, I'm looking at y'all and I'm just not going to ignore the obvious, the brains and the beauty. Um, can you just look at this beautiful panel just for a moment? I'm looking at you all and I'm just so proud. You know, I, I, as a black woman, I'm just proud. I'm proud. So, you know, God has a way of kind of ordering those steps, right? Like you said, you weren't even going to do this, but this, your son changed the course in the direction of what you were studying. So that passion is there. And I listened to everyone. Everybody was very passionate. And uh, all of you named something personal and why you decided to, to go into this. So for those that don't know, I was so excited. I didn't even introduce myself properly. I don't even know if I did. When you guys came on, I was so excited. But I'm Kendall Anise. I go by the name of, as you see, the Remix Coach. Um, I also say, also say I'm your favorite life coach. And so you'll hear some of that in me as I go. I'm trying to less of me, more of you, because it is about you. But when you said that, something just clicked, you know, about being passionate about what you do. And they say, if you're passionate about what you do, you never work a day in your life. Do you guys feel like you're working still? And I know you may have long hours, but do you feel like this is your passion. This is your gift. Anyone so, can answer that. I'm going to say, I always say this is the best job I've ever had. Yeah. Monica might have a different opinion. <laughs> 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 but I really enjoy this. So I was a stay-at-home mom for the first half of both of my kids' lives. Uh -huh. And their father would say, you don't want to go back to medicine? You don't go oh. And then I realized I didn't want to go back to that. Mm. And I started to learn this and I was actually mm -hmm. help people. You can't help somebody in six minutes. And that's about no. the amount of time the insurance company will give you to get in, get out, and then go home with two hours worth of charge. Wait a minute. Say that hope. Say that again because I've heard that before and I want to make sure they hear you. Mm -hmm. Just talk I talk about that part a little bit and then continue because I want people to understand that. Right. So they you would literally have about six to eight minutes of FaceTime with the patient running in, grabbing the chart on your way in, at least when we have paper charts, pretending like you know everything or remember them and go, hey, how you doing? Okay, bye. You know, and you don't really have time to really sit down and dig and put the pieces together to figure out what's going on. I even mm -hmm. worked with someone once who said, no, nope, too many problems. We can only deal with two today. You have to come back for another appointment to talk about mm -hmm. those other ones. And so now that we work for ourselves and we've set up more of a kind of boutique or concierge type of 
paradigm, we take an hour to an hour and a half for most of our intake appointments or follow-ups or anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And we get to sit and go through the results with you line by line. What do they mean for you? Because the same result in five different kids can mean five different things, depending yeah. on everything else that's going on. Yeah. And then we explain what we recommend around that. And it's a, it really is a collaborative effort. It's not here, take this, good luck with that. The parents and the child, depending on the age, if they're able to advocate for themselves, they get to be a part of the plan. So we're not doing something to them. We're doing something with them. I do you want that. liquids? Do you want capsules? Do you want powder? Do you don't do chewies? Like, you know, all of those different things. What's your schedule like? Well, let's see how we can work this in your daily schedule. This is Monica's hat. So I'm not stepping on your toes. But we really do talk to people. We've had people leave their intake in tears simply because they were relieved that finally someone listened to them. They finally felt like they were heard and they were going to get somewhere. I just got a chill through my body because do you know how amazing that is, Dr. Mai? I mean, really, have you ever sat in that for a moment to realize what kind of care that is? The care that cares. Absolutely. That's really what, that's phenomenal because you're absolutely right. I'm thinking about doctor's appointments and unfortunately the last couple of years I've been to a plenty, you know, dealing with what I was telling you and, um, and then preparing for other colon. I had three colonoscopies in a year and a half where some people go every 10 years and then all the, the doctor's appointments in between. So I'm thinking back as you're saying that, and you're absolutely right with some. I've had my uh, general practitioner for almost 30 years. Um, but I'm thinking about what you're saying. It's so true. Because I don't remember a, a time ever that I sat in there an hour and a half and didn't feel like I had to leave or had to go or it is. And it's also we're conditioned to do that, too. Right. On a lunch break or I got to go somewhere after because we're used to being in and out. But how can you effectively assess you can't. a patient in six minutes? You can't. You can't. I think yeah. that it speaks a lot to that. It is a sick care model. Mm -hmm. It is not mm -hmm. a wellness and a health care mm -hmm. model it, Say that it, again. Mm -hmm. it is so focused on putting band-aids on symptoms as opposed to getting to the root cause Woo! this idea that somehow somebody outside of the patient knows that patient's body better than they do that they Woo! are not their own best doctor is a falsehood. And it is something that I think that we've all been socialized and programmed to believe that on some level, that as professionals, that that we are the best conduit for somebody else's health. And that's just not true. What we do is partner with our patients because right. their input is invaluable and it helps us be better as healthcare providers. And I want to well say, and as a as a life coach, a healing coach, that's exactly what they do with emotional healing. Mm. They put that band aid on, and they don't get to the root. So, I mean, you ah, oh, mm, mm, mm. it's so true. Not anyone, anyone. Well, I have a different paradigm. So that, that's a beautiful thing to be able to spend time with your clients, because as I tell all of my clients, it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. Not a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. since I still practice within the conventional model, insurance model. So there's two arenas. Mm -hmm. The conventional insurance model. Yeah. So I practice within that model, but with a functional medicine integrative twist. Love so it. I have to let my clients know, okay, this is going to take time. All right. So I'm going to pour myself into you. I need the same from you. As such, I see my clients more often. OK, I do that. I might see them once a week. Now, just a quick thing about um, pregnancy. There's two ways that um, there's two types of uh, insurances out there. Medicaid and traditional insurance, commercial mm -hmm. insurance. OK, mm -hmm. so Medicaid is fee for service. You can you get paid per visit. And I'm just going to drop drop the mic on this one. Come on. Um, we get like 34, 35 bucks for an office visit. 
All right. Now that's the 99213. That's the coding. Woo! That's the coding. Okay. Woo! And if you code beyond that higher, you get audited. And I've been audited before. Woo! Okay. Even though I document everything. Wait, I don't want you to go past this. Okay. Dr. Higgy, because you just said Super something. Important. The gates are open. We're going to yes. walk right in because you money. just said something. Right. You just said something. And when we talk about healthcare and we talk about um, po people, they can't even foot before the O and the R, the other O and the R. And you talk about adequate, efficient health care. But if they're paying thirty five dollars uh, uh, and you want to, they want you in and out because they have this state insurance. This you is can't why get quality care. There's no way you can't pay the bills with thirty five dollars. So no. it's microwave medicine. Yeah. All right. So yeah. but then there's then on the other hand, with commercial, we're talking about pregnancy now with commercial insurance. It's global, meaning we don't get paid until the patient delivers. All right. Mm. So what is my incentive mm. to spend more time with that client mm. and see them more often? I'm going to get paid the same if I see them every four weeks, every six mm. weeks versus if I see them every week. Now, I don't use that as my parent. Right, right, God right. is my source and my resource. Come on, hello. Okay. So yeah. I don't I don't practice medicine based on what I'm going to get paid. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get paid because I'm going to be sitting there right. Hey, Jesus, how you doing? He can be right here. All right. So, so the thing is the pay system. So you have to set the expectation in the beginning when you begin to confront the client. Yeah. You have to let them know the situation. Yeah. Right? And informed it. If you want me to take care of you, I'm gonna need your time and your effort. Yeah. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna pour all of me into you. Yeah. But I need you to see me more from from my in an yeah. OB perspective. Yeah. I need you to see me more often, and that's what I do. And I've just started my lifestyle classes with my lifestyle strategist as an addendum to what I do in the office. I love I, it. I kind of talk a lot. You know what I'm saying? I so love. I, it. I tell them so much. Sometimes they're we have think gaps, so they're not going to retain it. So now to cement and to concretize what I say, I've got my lifestyle coach. Um, I call him my lifestyle strategist. Your uh, lifestyle strategist. Yes. Well, I have some comments and I just want to read. Kevin says, I agree. I was misdiagnosed for years for headaches, five minutes in and out, not diagnosing properly. I left that healthcare provider. And then I have well said, Dr. Naeem, I believe that is why a lot of black people don't go to the doctor, which leads me, let's see, which leads me to, um, <laughs> the strong black woman. Let's just talk about it. The you know. strong black woman, mm -hmm. she don't feel any pain. She's good. You got people with money like Serena Williams. You got Queen B, Beyonce you know, almost losing their lives, giving birth because doctors don't believe that strong black women could possibly feel their pain. They can possibly not know what's going on with them. And um, uh, either anybody can go to that. And then I have, I have so many things that um, I like to have organic conversations. I have, you know, some points that I wrote down. We, we hadn't even gotten to them yet. <laughs> <laughs> because this is good. I allow God to lead this conversation wherever it's going to go. But if someone wants to chime in about that, you know, about um, black people, why they don't go to the doctor, we can talk about Henrietta Lacks. I'm here in Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Johns Hopkins, what happened to Henrietta Lacks. Um, I can tell you right now, uh, I'm from South Jersey, but I've been living here for most of my, my adult life now. And they're still scared in Baltimore because of what happened to Henrietta Lacks. For those that don't know, make sure you do your homework on Henrietta Lacks, but they used her cells to create different medicines and all of these things uh, with her DNA without notifying her, without telling her she had no clue. And in Baltimore, it's um, people, when I first moved here, people were like, they didn't want to walk around Johns Hopkins at night because they were thinking like body snatchers and they were afraid of the doctor. And people really still feel that way in this area and a lot of urban areas uh, around. So anybody want to talk about that? I know I said a lot there, but anyone can chime in on that. 
Well, just real quick, in, in recent research confirms a black baby is three times more likely to die if treated by a white doctor, period. Mm -hmm. And there's and Dr. Slims as well, who's the, the father of gynecology, period. On African enslaved women, no anesthesia. So every time you go to get a pap smear, you have an enslaved African woman to think who he experimented on while alive with no anesthesia to understand our female anatomy. And he's buried in, I think, Central Park somewhere. They finally took down the statue. But yeah, Dr. the statue, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the tragedy is, is just the disparities in healthcare and we are all participating, like all walking around and knowing that this exists. And yet it's, I believe that it's conversations like this that help bring this to the forefront so that we can have an open dialogue about yeah. how important it is because you cannot ignore yeah. your health because it is the one true asset. Yeah. If it is, if it goes away, you're going to spend all your time and your resources yeah trying to reclaim it. And I, I think that Dr. Sanza, um, you were doing a panel on healthcare disparities, a summit, excuse me, before. Let, can I say something right before Dr. Sanza? I wanted to go back to Dr. Maya quickly and I wanted the viewers to listen. She said, when a baby is treated by a white, can you say that once more? Because I'm sure it happens in the other areas too, but I, can you just say that once more? Because I want people to really understand why it's important that I have these black women on here, these black doctors, and why it's important. Now, can you be treated by a white person? Absolutely. I'm not even, you know, we're not, even, that's not even the point. The point is how specific and important it is. Can you repeat that once more? And then Dr. Sanza, please. Yes. So a black baby is three times more likely to die if treated by a white doctor, period. Mm -hmm. period with a T. Yeah. That part. Dr. Sanza? Well, healthcare disparities, I mean, we all know it's been going on for quite some time. Like you said, practicing on, uh, OB, you know, OB procedures on women without anesthesia. They look at the statue of the black man and they look at him as being, you know, no pain. He can take the pain. Uh, when they, when they came in from Africa and beaten on them in, in our men. So the reality is they've been practicing us for a long time. When you look at Medicare, uh, Medicaid, what is it mostly? It's mostly they try to put it in our, in, our, in our communities. They call it the health deserts. You don't see a Whole Foods in uh, you know, SWATs. You don't see a Whole Foods in you know, Compton. You don't see that. And what's the excuse? You know, they just don't want to provide those things. They want to provide you with food stamps. That's what? that you can buy your whole holes, your Twinkies. They the built a Whole Foods in Baltimore City when they gentrified. How about that? Yeah, but it wasn't yeah. there before that. Yeah. And so, and they experiment. And even, I, I don't know if you guys read the book, uh, Medical Apartheid, but that's a great book for any African-American um, to read because it tells you even how the documentation mm. to identify even organ transplants and getting organs uh, that people of color are lower on the list and they're more likely to die because they're waiting for a, a transplant and how they came up with all the system for that. So, you know, the truth of the matter is, I know everybody on this board, when somebody, I mean, on this panel, when they walk in, I've had people tell me like, oh my God, I'm so glad to see a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, had, I first moved here to Decatur. Mm -hmm. This man walked in and said, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. I feel like Rosa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they understand, we understand yeah. the struggle. Yeah. yeah, and the truth of the matter, everybody thinks that the doctor is getting the money, but you know who's getting the money? The CEO of the hospital. Come on, sure and, come on. I and, learned that from Gray's Anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? When you're practicing, and they come yeah. back and tell you. Yeah. I remember one, that's why I don't take insurance Yeah. because when I was practicing, they came back and said, oh, we, Aetna came back and said, oh, we overpaid you $40,000. We want our money back. Mm, yeah. I can't go to my, I can't go to my light company and say, I want my money back. Hmm. I can go to my, my a rent and person and landlord to say, I want my money back. I can't go to my employers and say, I want my money back. I've taken care of these people because you forgot a code or a, wow. or whatever. 
So when you go to that practitioner and yeah. your wealth is your wealth, because you know what? You spend the money anyway. Because yeah. you're gonna pay that copay, you're gonna pay that deductible, you're gonna pay that insurance. That money is gonna get paid. Yeah. So why not pay it to somebody that's gonna listen to you? Come on. You know your body better than anybody Come else. On. We all partner with you because yeah. we can only go by what you tell us. We know yeah. how to write the right ask the right questions to get the right answers. Yeah. To look down the path to find the root cause. Yeah. So the root cause just don't pop up like magic. Yeah. We don't pop the magic dragon. We have to work together. So yeah. if, we, if you don't talk to me, if I'm a white person and I've already wrote, wrote you off, why am I going to tell you that my blood pressure medicine is making me a headache? Ooh. Let me tell you something. You, I mean, you ladies, I knew this was going to be good, but you ladies are selling nothing but the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth because um, so many things. I don't even know where my mom has a question, but I know when she's gone to the doctor and she's had a series of, of health, you know, challenges and she'll call me. It was a young black girl behind the desk. There was a young black doctor and she, I didn't even know she was a doctor. She was all fly. You know, my mom excited, excited, <laughs> excited. but she wants to ask how much time can a doctor spend with Medicare patients who are seniors? Is it still the same? Yes. It's still the same. Yes. So they don't care about the seniors neither. Nobody cares about no. the seniors. No. And, and in, re age. in re in rehab medicine, generally the seniors have like a list of at least 10 problems mm. and somewhere between about right. five mm. and eight medications. And that is not six minutes. Six to eight minutes is only enough time to address one area. It's not even enough time to address that one area. It's not even enough time to get an oil change for your car. Right. No. You know, that Let part. alone try to, you can't think about the things that you can do in 10 minutes. Yeah, can you do some things? But to completely assess someone's health, ailment, situation, diagnosis, prognosis, 10 minutes? And also, not to mention, how can they get at the root cause and try to reverse? Because you can reverse high blood pressure. You can reverse diabetes. You can reverse almost everything that's out here, even cancer. Okay? So, like, one of the things that I was thinking about, too, when we started talking about health is wealth, is that people don't realize they're bankrupting themselves with these chronic health issues. And I talk about diabetes a lot and people initially will try to argue, but then when they go home and think about it and come back, they're like, Ooh, you were right. You're going to spend, this is like 10 years ago, they did a study and it showed that the patient that has diabetes is going to spend $10,000 out of pocket a year. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. You can see one of us for less than that. Can you talk about high blood pressure too? Because you mentioned that. Let's, let's talk about that. So high blood pressure and diabetes are related. They fit into metabolic disease. They fit into the insulin resistant realm, which surprises a lot of people because like they may have high blood pressure running in their family uh, you know, doctors will tell them they're going to have the, this the rest of their lives. Usually it's the stress running uh, generational and the way people eat is generational. Right. And I want to mention post-traumatic slave syndrome. I don't know if you guys are. Yeah. We were, we were born into trauma. Born into trauma is generational. And if you don't do something about it, it will take seven generations for that energy to resolve it. So you talking right. Oh, Ooh. can you say that again? Because, you know, somebody might be in the back. They might be in the kitchen. Y'all come from the kitchen. Listen to this. <laughs> somebody might hear it from a distance. Say that again, please. So with post-traumatic slave syndrome, mm -mm -mm. it's a generational, it's a generational phenomenon. So just like the Holocaust affects people with, that are Jewish, it affects Black people with generational stress. Mm. And if you don't do something about it to resolve it, 
it will last for seven generations. It takes seven generations to resolve it spontaneously. Wow. So my cousin Gina says something. Look, I hope this is my cousin Gina. She said, this conversation is perfect timing for me as I just completed metabolic bolic, uh, challenge with my gym and my body has begun to react favorably. It is now a life change for me and no longer a challenge. I love that. I love that. Life changes. I have implemented so many in mine, in mine too. Oh my gosh. Um, all right, let me ask you all, um, because we talked about what you need, what you need to know about your body. You guys are already telling us. So does anybody want to share something um, who hasn't shared about that? And then we're going to move forward that hasn't shared about what about you, Dr. Monica, about um, your body that people may we may think they know, but they may not really know. That could be so many things. I know. I, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, what, what I do want to say, maybe not directly to that, but mm -hmm. is about being your own advocate. Yes. And you mentioned Serena Williams before. So for people who aren't familiar with that, after she had her daughter, so she previously had blood clots. Yeah. And then after she had her daughter, you are actually most susceptible as a woman to hypercoagulability or blood clots, like the first six weeks or so after having a baby. She started while she was still in the hospital to experience that familiar symptom in her lungs that she had experienced before, pulmonary emboli, so clots in her lungs. She kept trying to tell her doctors. Nobody was listening to her. They kept trying to brush her off. Oh, you know, tired, or you just had the baby or whatever. She's like, no, 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 no. Like, I know what this feels like. You mm -hmm. need to go ahead and take me down for a scan. She mm -hmm. had to, it took days of her pushing. And then finally they did so. And she actually did have blood clots in her lungs. This is Serena Williams, who's having to fight and advocate to be heard for a condition she's also already had before, which also put her at higher risk. So imagine if it was Serena Jenkins. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When I was in the hospital with my son, I had blood clots. So I was there for months. And luckily, my perinatologist was a black doctor. And she and I kind of bonded early on. I had her personal cell phone number, which I, I love her to this day. And there were many times in the hospital, especially at night, you know, some young white attending or young white fellow would run through and think they knew all the things and try to like, we think we're going to dismiss you tomorrow. The hell, the hell you are, what you're not going to do. With me. Mm -hmm. Like that's not the plan. Mm -hmm. I would text, I would text her like home, you know, Billy over here is trying to kill me. Okay. So I need you to get Billy in check. The next thing you know, somebody else would come in and be like, it's fine. Everything's fine. A lot of them did not like me, but I have okay. the wherewithal to advocate for myself. Yeah. Yes. And my knowledge and myself. And luckily, I had a relationship with my doctor who was a black woman. I genuinely believe it's so important. Had not been black. I do not know if me or my son may be here. My condition was very severe. It was that relationship and me advocating for myself, even yep. that and not being scared to use her number. Yep. Hey, hey. Yep. Really over here tripping. We're not yep. Here. Yep. And, but you know what? Oh my God, Dr. Monica, you're so right. This is why this is it's so important. You know, we talk about, and I have a therapy uh, therapist panel coming later this month, but that's why it's so important to really, you know, people can say what they want, but to get someone that looks like you, that can understand you, even, even if you, the looks, yeah, the slang, because yeah. somebody may not know how to articulate what they want to say. But if they, if I give like, or whatever kind of look, or if I say, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to get it, you're going to probe and ask, well, what do you mean? Or, or you might use, yeah, I saw such and such somebody's name, something yeah. that they had. And, and if you're asking a white doctor who, who um, the city girls are or who somebody is and they had this, 
they might not even know. But if you say, then they'll be like, okay, I looked at the shade room or I looked somewhere else and I heard them talking about this. I mean, even the simplest things, because some people can't articulate what's going on with their body. You know, they want to advocate for themselves, mm -hmm. but they may not speak the way that that kind of doctor needs them to speak. Right. So then that's they look at them as awareness. Exactly. Yeah, right. I can tell you how many times I had to translate as a resident rounds. Everybody would leave, and I could right. see the deer and headlights look on yeah. the patient's face, and I would translate in thirty seconds. They're like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. And if yeah. I hadn't, then they would have said that patient's not compliant. No, they yeah. didn't. Know what you said. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And they think awesome. they're uneducated. They think it's if yeah. they don't speak, right. if they speak in broken English or slang ebonics, um, they think that they're uneducated, but they might not. That's how they may speak, and they might have more degrees. Bilingual. We're bilingual. We're there not you, go. you trilingual, baby. Trilingual. <laughs> you know, my, my nature. I had a problem with my nature. I understand what that means. They don't. My sugars. Not administration. And this comes my, in the my, country. You know, and I, I have I've never heard a white woman's woman say her cycle either. Mm -hmm. right. I've never heard black people say and my she cycle. Know who my flow is either. My flow, my administration. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And oh, all of this is taking know. place maturing, in a country. Maturing. <laughs> all of this is taking place in a country that spends ten times more Come than on. any Come other on. country combined Come on, on health care. Come but on, the disparities that happen in our communities and people of color is so severe that it is more advantageous. For an American female, black female to go to another country, Come on. Like 59 times more healthy for you to go travel to another country and have a better outcome birthing your baby than to stay in this country. That is that oh, is an absolute too. epidemic. That's Come on. what we should be talking about. That's Woo! the we need to have more conversations and really make sure at the Absolutely. forefront that we are advocating for the people who don't have the voices. Say that. Say that. That's say that. You know, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. well, the health of the pregnant, a pregnant woman, it mirrors mm. the public, right? Well, there's a study that was put out in 2018 by the University of Carolina, Chapel Hill that showed that 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy. Mm. Metabolically healthy. Now, what does that look like? Um, Dr. Serena alluded to that. Okay, it starts with, it actually starts with hyperinsulinemia. Mm -hmm. Then insulin resistance, mm. all right? Then pre-diabetes and mm. then diabetes, all right? Now, and all that has to do with your cardiometabolic Mm. Right. So let's look upstream mm. because we're here to, to mm. help to empower our people. Absolutely. Okay? First of all, we've got to get, as you guys have all alluded to, the root cause. Yes. The root cause is what's at the end of your fork. Come on now. You do three times a day. That's one thing. What you feed your vessel, this wonderful vessel that God gave us that we all, most of us, I, I have my own long story. It's too long for now. We all abuse. We abuse our bodies mentally, mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually. Come on, preach. Physically. Yes. And of course, what we feed our body, what we watch. Yeah. The, the, the mess that we watch on TV. On yeah. Come on, you better all speak that, it. All that plays a role into what's you going on it. neurologically. You better speak and it. Because this is my passion to work with women and such that Dr. Maya and Dr. Monica won't have to deal with the impact. All of these metabolic issues, guess when they begin? When they, they begin in utero. Mm -hmm. the, neural pore, the neural pore closes at 28 days gestation. Wait a minute. The brain, the neurological system. And that's where the enemy wants to get us. I don't, I don't go too big. You better educate us. But the enemy wants to get us in utero. All right. That's how he starts it. All right. So people don't even know they're pregnant. Oops, I'm pregnant. Oops, I'm pregnant. All right. So we've got to start upstream. And you've got to work on what you're doing every single day 
with your with your lifestyle. That's why I have mm -hmm. a lifestyle strategist. So our goal now is to empower you, the public, all right, to understand that you have to take control of your own health. Be empowered. Ask the questions. Ask yep. the hard questions. And guess what? If that doctor won't answer, next, mm -hmm. next, yeah. next. Yep. Bye, Fernando. Bye, Felicia. Yep. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. But you know what? Educate. This is so important to me. This channel, I, I said at the top, is about education, elevation, and entertainment. We're going to entertain you, but we're going to educate you, and hopefully you are elevated by conversations like this. There is so much garbage out there, you know, to talk about. We already know how to have fun. We already know all of that, and all of that is fine, but we really need to educate and feed our mind. You talk about what we're putting on the forks. Right. And some people are putting on the forks because they're dealing with emotional issues, trauma, unhealed wounds. They're dealing with mommy, daddy issues. They're dealing with um, relationships, work, um, trying to code switch, you know, all of these different things um, they're ingesting emotionally. And then they're using the fork for comfort food. But that comfort food is what's killing us. The yes. fork is the drug. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, yeah. And so we, what is the biggest misconception about health in your field? Anyone can answer that. That about, they're going to you, have to give well, I would like so. to say in our community, what yeah. I hear a lot of times, we're going to all die from something. Yes. Oh, but it's so not cool. about whether we're going to die from something. It's how are we going to live and how are we going to thrive? Now, yeah, you may have diabetes, but insulin resistant is reversible. Amen. Um, diabetes, you can stop the progression, you can stop the hypertension, but really, that's a that's a root, that's a, a downstream effect of what's going on in your blood vessels. That didn't start mm. there. That's the end result there. Mm. So I think a lot of people really don't understand when they get diagnosed with a disease, they think that disease started then, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And to bring it back on what Dr. Higgy say, it's not only what you eat, it's what you absorb. If your gut's all jacked up, you're not digesting properly because of all the things. Your gut is really considered your second brain. So you have bi-directional gut skin axis, gut brain axis. So a lot of times you don't need a, 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 a as we used to say, anti-crazy pill, because that's what we speak our language, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you may need to just clean up your gut. And those 75% of those chemicals that balance the brain, you're stored in the gut. I want you to just pause. I want you to say that again, because when people say I have a gut feeling, a gut intuition, everything that feels, it comes from the gut. So I want you to say that again so they understand, like that's where a lot of things are birthed. Can you say that again, Dr. Sanza? So the gut is really considered the second brain. Mm -hmm. It has 75 to 85% of the chemicals that are stored that we think is here, the serotonin, the dopamine, it's really stored in the gut. So it's almost like you have to take care of your gut. That's, that's, your, that's your safety deposit box. You, mm. know, you have to make sure you take care of it. You put what it's in need, in need it. You need, if you're digesting, if you're eating on the go all the time, a lot of times, especially with us in our community, not saying bad or good, but we think in order to be healthy, we have to be vegan. But I've seen some vegans that are unhealthy. Slutty mm -hmm. vegan, I'm sorry, that is not healthy food. You cannot go to the slutty vegan and think that you're eating healthy just because no, you know. But it's it's good, it's good though. <laughs> when I but, visited Atlanta, you know what? They had the hype around it. I must confess, when I went to Atlanta a few years ago, everybody was talking about it. I tried it. It is great, but that's not something we have to understand. Like you cannot eat that stuff every day. Just you know. because it's vegan, just because it's vegetarian, I think I'm so glad that you made that point. Just because it's that, you don't OD on that. Yeah. It's so about I'm, balance. It's I'm about balance. That up. It's all about balance. Yeah. And you, you know, you need to feed what the body what your body needs. Yep. Some so people genetically and biologically, they can't be vegans yeah. because they need that. Yeah, and then you take sure. other medications that deplete you of the it's nutrients. True. Yeah, so you got to replace that. So that's why everybody on this panel is, so true. is 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 important because your situation may be different from your twin. Okay, 
mm-hmm. because each you have epigenetics. So yeah. you have everything that goes around that that not only is genetically, but what's going around you. Are you exposed to fumes? Are you exposed to mold? Are you exposed to a bad behavior? I mean, a bad marriage or all of that. That's gonna that's gonna translate something different in the medical than the somatization on a manifestation of what's going on on the inside. Trust me. I know about that too, as I'm going through that right now. And I had to release that from my body. That's not going to take me down. So you're absolutely right. You're a hundred percent correct because it was a, a lot of different things. My blood pressure was slightly high for the first time in my entire life. And when my doctor, I started telling her some of the stuff that I'm dealing with, y'all have no clue what I'm dealing with. And she was like, duh. And I was like, duh, because I knew. And then I had to look back. I said, "Mm -mm, nope, it's not because it's so the way you process things emotionally. People don't understand that that affects your health when you're stressed, worried, concerned, when you're um, going through menopause, menopause, toxicity of any kind. People don't understand those type of things. So imagine the older, us older, because I'm 50 and over, right? So you deal with the menopause or pre-menopause, you dealing with um, stress or divorce or relationships, you're dealing with some people have, you know, younger kids, grandkids, you're dealing with um, whether you're going to um, quit a job, start a job, lose a job, um, start a business. Do Think about all the stuff that people are the deaths, sicknesses, you know, here for the, because the black woman, and I, I talk about this all the time, stop saying in 24 hours, you can go to the baby shower, the, um, the wedding, the funeral, the, um, the baby's uh, first birthday, the christening of this in 24 hours, people are killing themselves to try to be all they can be in this strong black woman who's loyal and can do everything while they're killing themselves. And it's one chron- one stressor after the next. And so it becomes this chronic cycle that we uh, are all enduring and without interrupting that cycle. Yes. And, you know, it, with healthy habits, because we all know when we get stressed, we default to some unhealthy habits. And if we can be re-reminded of how important it is to create good, healthy habits. Yes. And maybe you don't do 24 habits right away, but you start slowly but yes. by committing to hydrate properly. And then yes. you commit to, to making sure that you're eating a healthy breakfast, breakfast and, you know, incorporating good proteins and yes. incorporating good healthy fats. Like one small step after the next gets you far more, Love that. nets you a greater result than deciding yes. you're going to take on 15 new things. And yes. by the end of two weeks, you're exhausted. And then you're yep. right back to where you were, yep. you know, in the bed with a box of Twinkies, which is yeah. you know, not helpful to you. Yeah. But if you've incorporated small wins, then you're going to feel victorious, then you're going to feel better. And if you build that momentum, and then I think that we are so influential that we also influence those that are around us. So yeah. when we elevate our bar, then other people get excited about what it is that we're doing and they want to then increase their yeah. healthy habits, which overall influences not only our families, but certainly our communities. And we, as Black women, I think mm-hmm. are so phenomenal in that way. And yes. we just have to start with ourselves, though, because oftentimes... Yeah. We want to put everybody else's mask yep. on. And if we just take a moment to take care of the woman in the mirror, we Come are on. far more powerful. Woo, Dr. Naima, you said a whole mouthful. Let's just take a moment. Everybody needs to really tap to that one. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so important. And I love what you said. Even, you know, I'm big on that. The small changes, the small wins, the small victories. Don't look at the whole, well, I don't want to say pie because we're not talking about (laughs) people like the healthy eating, but don't look at the whole portion, if you will, bite-sized pieces. That's what we really need to look at. So you can see that victory and say, oh, you know what? 
I feel good about myself or I feel good about I drank two gallons of water today or I feel good that I ate, nothing, I ate fruits and vegetables today. So yay me and then go on to the next day. And I think it becomes that victorious win because now you're like, okay, I see the difference. Maybe I see the difference in how I walk up the stairs or how I'm breathing, or I might see the difference in I ran a mile. Now I ran two when this was difficult. And I think that will get people motivated to be able to act right, eat right, and really listen to their bodies. Can, uh, do you guys agree with that? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I think that we have been conditioned to ignore our bodies. Right? We got to just get up and keep going yeah. and keep it pushing and grind, yeah. grind, hustle and grind. And yeah. I, that is the antithesis of where health comes from. Yeah. Let me, let me ask some questions. Um, answer some. Pam says we push ourselves so hard. No wonder we have so many chronic diseases. Educate ladies. We need more doctors like all of you. Thank you all. And um, then my, my mom has another question. I told you she's had back surgery. She's had everything that you can think of. Um, well, she says, what can I heal? How can I heal myself from long-term pain medication? So she's always in pain because of her back. So I think, mom, I think what she's saying is that she doesn't want anything to happen because of the pain medication, because we know about that. Yes, Dr. Serena. So one of my areas is rehab medicine, and mm -hmm. I specialize in musculoskeletal medicine. And I'm going to throw it to Dr. Mima after me, because she's also a structural doctor. Um, but um, believe it or not, she needs to make these changes that we're talking about. Yeah. Nutrition is at the top. It's at the top and stress, stress can go to the low back and to the neck. And just because you're, if you're on an opiate pain medication, you can certainly get off of it. Um, it it's not a life sentence. And actually they found in studies that the opiates do not relieve pain as well as these other alternative methods, okay? So it's like a delusion that conventional medicine has planted that this is like the top of the food chain for pain relief. It is not. It is such a myth. I, th that study was just recently published and I was reading it thinking, the hell? Like we have all been duped. And I yeah. think that that is entirely tragic. One of the things that I think is so important and why I refer a lot of my patients to Dr. Sanza is what they don't, I think, appreciate nearly enough is the things that you consume create inflammatory reactions that are creating pain, pain in your joints, right? And so if we're not talking about that and you keep coming in with the same things because maybe you're eating something that you believe is healthy, but it's causing an inflammatory reaction in your body, all we're going to continue to do is just feed a cycle. Mm -hmm. But we have to interrupt that and... The, this idea of having multiple people on your healthcare team I think is ideal, right? Like we want to talk about all the things and not mm -hmm. just approach it from a linear aspect. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to just add to what Dr. Uh, Naima said, that now in the treatment protocols, like Medicare is going to come out with this soon. Uh, chiropractor is going to be, and also exercise are going to be recommended in conventional medicine mm -hmm. for back, was, for low was, back pain. It was in the Gamma article years ago that that actually is the first line of treatment recommended now, sp spinal manipulation. I've been trying to tell my mom, she won't listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my mom says something that's it's a good point. And she says she agrees with you, Dr. Serena. She, they don't believe that, but sometimes it's hard for people to afford the natural way. And sometimes medication is free mm -hmm. when you have certain insurances. So yeah. I'm going to visit Dr. It's not really free though. <laughs> you don't pay for it doesn't mean it's free. It's right, free. because your body is paying for it too. Yes, yes. A lot of times and those pain medication causes hyperanalgesic 
So they actually make the pain worse because yeah. once those receptor sites are, yeah. are, 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 so imagine playing musical chairs. Once yep. those chairs are taken up, there's no place of it for the pain medicine to go. So it actually makes the pain worse. Yeah. And so you can that. take some turmeric, quercetin, uh, and you know what? This really gluten is neuroinflammatory. Yep. Drop the mic on yep. that. So that is what. Say they, that again. Say that again. Please say that again. Because yep. this is, we're doing the natural way. So many people are saying, you know what? I need to figure out how I can see you all. I need to um, to get access to say that again about gluten because we are what we eat. You know, we've heard that since we were children. You are what you eat. And I think people thought that that was just something funny to say or they didn't really understand what they were saying. And most people are living to eat instead of eating to live. Like people get it twisted. Well, it's no flavor. It doesn't taste this way. That's really not what the food is intended because we can cook and we can season. That's what we're used to as a culture. But it it's not for that purpose. It's to heal our bodies. So please can continue that. Am I right with that, Dr. Sanza? Please continue yeah. that. So like I said, gluten is very neuroinflammatory. That actually makes your pain worse. Mm. And so if people want to say, what can I do? That doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost you a dime. Changing your lifestyle yeah. movement, yeah. your muscles, like get stiff and rigid. But yeah. you know, food, what we eat can be very inflammatory because they change the way we've had food. Yeah. The yeah. food that we had when my grandmother was alive that's the food we got to pay all the money for. Yeah. We pay all the money without the antibiotics and without yep. the steroids and without the pus and all that yep. and, and all that stuff. But when we grew up, grandmother, they raised their own food. So that's another reason yep. you can make your own container gardens. Yeah. Raise your own food. Those are some things that you can do that won't cost you a dime, but yep. just, just changing, like, like Dr. Diana said, making those yep. small increments yeah changes and it's no time like the present like it really people i i understand even with coaching people do this people want to harp on what they didn't do and what happened back then yes acknowledge that but now we're in the present do better even after this show if you learn something i'm sure from each of these ladies implement what they're saying today like you can start today, people. Don't worry about what you weren't doing. You can start today towards your future because you want to have a longer future, right? So if you want to have a longer future and you want to be healthy because it ain't fun getting old if you're sick. Like you want to have a thriving future in a now. You don't want to just say, yeah, I'm getting, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm 80, but you feel like you're 180. It's not so, don't get caught up in the age and what's happening now. Think about what you're ingesting and what you're doing. Exercise, we've heard it for years. Exercise, eat well, eat fruits and vegetables, stay away from gluten, stay away from it. We heard that, we hear that. And if you don't take away, just, just take away how you eat because you are what you eat. Go ahead, Dr. Higgy. You were. I, I think a huge block, especially in our community, is the financial aspect. Mm -hmm. Because what my patients yep. frequently tell me, it costs so much to eat healthy. Yep. It costs so much not to eat healthy. Is Trader Joe is not as not expensive as people think. Exactly. Oh, so there has to be, yeah, so it has to be a paradigm shift, and it starts with us also. I'm trying to um, I'm share that with our patients that you have to change, again, as, as Dr. Naima says, um, bit by bit, base hits, base hits at a time. Um, it, you can go to McDonald's and get a, a Happy Meal or whatever for six bucks. But guess what? You can also make a nice salad for six mm -hmm. bucks. Mm -hmm. And it's McDonald's took salads off the menu. So that's oh, showing that. you what this what, what's that. happening. Wow. wow. So it's about learning how to shop. You've got to learn how to mm -hmm. shop. You can go to farmer's markets. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to go to the whole food store because that's the whole 
paycheck, paycheck. store. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the farmer's market. You can go to Sprout. We have a Sprouts. I'm not sure where you guys are. Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, more we and more stores too. are embracing the concept of and moms, organic. Mom's Organic Market. Do you guys have that? Yeah. I love mom. I've heard of it. Yeah. I used to live in DC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Monica, what does um what kind of pushback do you get from most of your clients? Ooh. Um, so many things. So <laughs> I would say I would say it's how to get things in their child. I can't mm -hmm. get them to take it, or they'll only mm -hmm. eat things. They're not gonna eat anything if I take these things away or you know, if it tastes bad, they won't, uh, you know, they won't take it. Um, those, I think that's the biggest, I mean, at the point that they've invested in coming to us, they are invested in wanting to get answers to help their child till they get hit with what needs to be done to do it. And then there's pushback sometimes on, and just overwhelmed on how they're going to do it. And I will say in fairness, when you have a child on the spectrum or with sensory issues, mm -hmm there are so many things that go into, they're already food restrictive, many mm -hmm. times, right? And so mm -hmm. then we were saying, okay, now they need to go off gluten, they need to go off dairy and they can't have mm -hmm. soy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, but they only eat these handful of things, literally what they're, they're not gonna, I don't have anything for them, they won't eat anything. Um, and these kids are freakishly strong. So when you're trying to get stuff in them and they're like, nope, no ma'am. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, those are, they are genuine concerns. Mm -hmm. What we try to work with them is, let's say chicken nuggets is the only thing they'll eat. And it's mm -hmm. usually a particular type of chicken nugget. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. I've been through it. Dr. Mai has been through it. You know, you may go through 15 different iterations of other things before you find the thing mm -hmm. that eventually they will try to eat and transition mm -hmm. to. There has to be wherewithal, there has to be stamina, there has to be determination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eventually, if you really want them to, they will. It just may take some time. Yeah. You have to get creative with, you know, try a smoothie, syringe it in and let them chase it with something that they like. Yeah. Bribery. I'm all for bribery with children. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> by any means. People have been bribing their kids for, for the, since the beginning of time. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not above it. <laughs> so I think that is the biggest pushback is, and then they don't want them to be, you know, I want them to be mad at me or, you know, yeah. I don't want to deal with the attitude. I have no sympathy for that argument. I, none, none. And I will, <laughs> Dr. Maya knows I've gotten real harsh with people lately. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm under, I'm not moved. I'm not moved. You're the parent. Yeah. If this is, and I'll tell people, if you're unwilling to change their diet, if you're unwilling to make a way to get these in them, you should not come see me anymore. Yeah. And I'm wow. not the best provider for you. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your time. Then you're going to say that they're not better and want to make it my fault. Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma mm -mm. So that, that I would say is, is the biggest pushback, but we do work with, I mean, there are baby steps. There are ways, there are things, but it does require tenacity and, and, you know, a strong back. I, I want to ask, doc, I want to stay on Dr. Monica and Dr. Maya because I'm an educator at an elementary school and we talked about McDonald's and we talked about like some of these students every day, McDonald's for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Some of these students are bigger than all of us, mm -hmm. right? Some yeah. of these students, every time you turn around, the nose is running, mm -hmm. you know, they want to go to the nurse every five minutes, you know, mm -hmm. they're big in every way. And this is no disrespect. You know, I'm, it just hurts my heart. It's heartbreaking. For the kids, it's like one girl, I remember the last year, school year, the beginning of the year, I was trying to walk a child to a student. We were coming in, um, we were outside and she kept saying that she was five. And I kept saying, oh, you're in fifth grade? You're, and she's like, no, five. Mm -hmm. She was bigger than I was. And I know that has not, that does, that's not always attributed to what you eat. I know that. Mm -hmm. But when you see the chronic ailments mm -hmm. of these children and how they're eating, what do you tell that parent 
where that brings their child in all the time, ear infection, runny nose, stomach ache, headache. What do you say to that McDonald's every day? What do you say to that parent? Well, there are layers that are involved. So my previous yeah. practice was in the heart of LA and I literally did have 10 and 11 year olds that were over 200 pounds. Yeah. And it got to the point where I used to say, well, if you just hold your weight where it is, you can grow into it. And then it got to the point where you're never going to grow tall enough to match this weight. We've got to do something. And it was, quite frankly, right in the middle of a food desert. I decided I was going to stop at the little store on Crenshaw on my way home to grab some herbs really quick. Ran inside, walked in the produce section and walked right back out. Everything was rotten. And I couldn't tell if it was rotting because nobody was buying it or nobody was buying it because it was rotten. Everything was rotten. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that didn't have transportation. I'm like, well, you need to barter. Offer to babysit their kid if they'll take you with them to Costco or something. What do you say to the parents that are in a rich area? And this is That's a county a school. school. This, I'm in a county school with That's people a pulling up with Benzes, Lexuses, uh, Mercedes. Well, they got the latest sneakers, the shoes. They so got all the accoutrements. Because I will tell you, there's no McDonald's in Beverly Hills, which was three to six miles from where I worked where there was a drive through on every corner. It's so much so that the uh, count city councilman had an ordinance passed where they couldn't install any more drive throughs as mm. his to decrease the obesity in the area. Mm. So that they're, they're two different ends of the paradigm, but the problem is kind of the same. Yes. Um, and it is difficult and it is a lifestyle change. And it's easier if you start, you know, with Dr. Higgy before you even get pregnant and then the baby's metabolism is impacted positively they're on out. Um, but there's a lot of misinformation and miseducation. And when you do have people say on the WIC program where they're getting big old, used to get the big old things of juice. Well, if I'm supposed the to juicy have juice and all of that, juice, mm -hmm. you know, five glasses is even better. And mm -hmm. I've had kids that were anemic and obese because they were drinking so much milk and juice and no nutrition mm. in their food. Mm. Um, so everything is kind of layered and multifactorial. And they say it's easier to get someone to change their religion than their diet. And sometimes mm. interactions I've had in the past, it rings true. Mm -hmm. The parent just don't bring the soda in the house. Mm -hmm. Death on mm -hmm. their face. Because it really what the problem is, they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. Right. So the child doesn't stand a chance. And so when we talk to our parents, yeah. one kid that has yeah. a medical illness and we need them to change the diet. I tell them, change the whole pantry. Slowly, yeah. slowly, don't go broke doing it. But it's not fair to say, here's your bird seed. And I'm going to yeah. burger. Like, it's just not fair to that child. Yeah. And, to, and it's just better for everyone to not have the unhealthy options yeah. available. Because more is caught than taught. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you, you can say, don't do as I say, do you know the old thing? But more is caught than taught. So you can teach your child how to eat. But if you're driving through the drive through and you're eating all of this food in the car and then you turn around to your child and say you're going to get fruits and vegetables when you get home, they're looking at you like. So you really and understand they use satellite technology to to plan out where they're going to put fast food. Yeah. Yep. It's a whole CO conspiracy that's been going on yep. for decades. Yeah. So this is not new and it's, it's intentional. Yeah. We're going to, ladies, are you up for a part two? We'll, we'll look at your schedules because it's so much. Everybody, I know I'm putting you on the spot live, but. <laughs> no, I'd love to. Oh, yeah. There's so many more things that I think everyone can share. Yeah. So many. We, I don't know. We might have to make this a monthly thing. We'll talk to you all because, you know, I'm loving you ladies and. This is just such a powerful conversation. You did good, Dr. Sons. <laughs> but this is my um, peaks. This is my peaks. My I peaks. Mean, <laughs> so we may have to, we're going to talk offline, but we may have to do something once a month. If you're in the comments right now and you would love to see us because we're talking about health, right? And it's we can't do this in, in, in one hour, an hour and a half. It's impossible. Let me see. Kendall, I'm a friend of your cousin, Gina. My name is Kareem. I'm a recent graduate of IIN Institute, an integrative nutrition, a health coach. What do you all think about health coaches? Okay. Everybody's like part two. Yes. Great conversation. Amen to that. Hi, my cousin Barry is on here too. Hi. Lively, wonderful conversation once once a month is great. So we'll talk about that, even though I'm like 
putting them on the spot live, but definitely because as you can see, these ladies are committed to our community as well. I mean, everybody, I'm just, I'm overjoyed because this is always my, I'm about to cry, Lord. This is always my goal. I love my people and I, I heal, help heal the way I can as a life coach, but I'm not a medical doctor. You know, I'm not what these ladies are. And I want you all to live and not, people talk about living their best life. And as a life coach, you hear people say it all the time, but how do you live your best life if you're unhealthy? If you are unhealthy, how are you living your life to the fullest? If you're on medication for the rest of your life, if you can barely walk, if you can barely talk, if you can barely, uh, barely digest food and all of these things, like how can you possibly live your best life? This is the only body we have, people. Health is wealth. We're passing down legacies of cars and houses and businesses. But what about the legacy of eating well and, and, and watching what we put in our bodies? What about that kind of legacy? You heard what Dr. Higgy said about seven generations. Seven gen you said that, right, Dr. Higgy? Dr. Serena. Do oh, Dr. Sarah. And I'm looking at Dr. Serena. Dr. Serena talked about seven generations back. Did you hear what she said? You know what I mean? So I just want us to do better and be better. Someone said, do a part two, part three. Um, indeed, I would love to. Uh, okay. All right. I'll read those later. But I want to end with this question. You guys give so much of yourself. You ladies give so much of yourself. Um, you're passionate about what you do. You care about the clients you see. Um, you care about the Black community, but I want to ask each of you, starting with Dr. Higgy, how do you pour back into your life? That's important. I just learned this year that 400 help, well, 400 doctors was the stat yearly commit suicide. What about the nurses? What about the other health professionals? Don't know. We give of ourselves so much, especially those of us, I think more so um, of African-American um, um, origin. We give of ourselves so much. And you're right. That's a very good question. So what I do, okay, I love to cook. I love to cook. I can burn. I love to cook. So, and I love to cook healthy. So I'll take a recipe and I'll, I'll orchestrate it and I'll twist it to one that's healthy. Um, my, my, I have a 92-year-old father who lives with me. And he does not like to eat with his teeth. Because so, <laughs> he can't get down to the get down. <laughs> no, he likes to take his teeth out to eat. <laughs> so I have to find creative ways to get healthy food. So in, like Dr. Monica was saying, so I have fi I find healthy ways to get healthy food um, into his body. So I cook, I exercise, um, I walk outside when it's not cold um, and enjoy nature. Um, and I pray and I meditate and I read the word. Love that. Dr. Dr. Maya, how do you? Um, so I've committed to self-care in the last year or so. So I go to the chiropractor every week with my kids. I get a neuromuscular release massage monthly. Uh, all of us go get facials by sister down the road um, more regularly as well. So I've committed to taking care of myself. I bought an exercise equipment piece for my house. So I can go down in the basement and get, even if it's just 14 minutes, do something to move. Um, and I always ate clean, at least in this part of my life, but I wasn't moving like I should be. So, you know, people in my family live well into their 90s and I'm not going to be the one on the walker. OK, come on. You can't mess it up for the rest of your family. You can't mess it up. Nope. <laughs> Don't ruin that good track record. <laughs> Dr. Santa. That's good, Dr. Maya. That's good. I meditate and I pray and I focus on gratitude because mm -hmm. if I wake up uh, gratitude and I go to bed uh, of three things that I'm grateful for and I go to bed with three things that I'm grateful for, I get my facial and I spend time with my grandkids and I'm a community buff. I love community. I probably talk to almost everybody in this panel once or twice a day. We nerd out. Uh, Dr. Higgy, should we talk about the glycocalyx and 
Corona, we talk about, you know, the all of that and we'll call. So I have my community and I do that and making with movement and just being appreciative and accepting me for who I am and that and being the best authentic me that I can be. I love that. I love that. Dr. Serena? Ditto what uh, Dr. Hickey said and what Dr. Sansa said. And I would say my my favorite pastime is manipulating the recipes and making them healthy. Um, and I, I'm outside almost every day doing a few miles of something. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, what, what um, Dr. Sansa said about the gratitude practice, I do that one also, journaling the three um, things that I'm grateful for. So, and I great. Mm -hmm. I love that. Dr. Monica? Um, I'd say probably my biggest thing is working out. I, mm -hmm. I love to work out. I do. It makes me happy. And my Peloton. Oh, I love Peloton. I find joy in it. Um, but yeah, movement is, I kind of get into a meditative space when I am working out. That's kind of my time for myself during the day. So that would be my biggest thing. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's that's good. Y'all Peloton people are something else. Y'all love those things. My my daughter, my 23-year-old daughter was like, Ma, I think I'm, I want a Peloton. I was like, okay. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Naima? I would 100% agree with you, Kendall. The Peloton people, there's a whole cult. There's yes. Whole cult. Really has been recruiting for a while now. <laughs> like, no joke. I um, Peloton, if you're watching, she needs a sponsor. Right, sponsor. Right. Yeah. 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 M Center. Yes, yes. I, I'm about I, to send this part to them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, please do. Please do. So I, um, I'm an actual outdoor cyclist. So while mm. I can appreciate the indoor folks, um, I'm an outdoor cyclist and me being outside, um, helps just gain perspective. So I'm a, uh, an avid hiker and just being having my feet in dirt in shoes mm. uh, is really, really helpful uh, for me to just re remind myself that whatever is happening is and always will be temporary, right? Just depending on how long that is. And so I am lucky enough to live right next to the river. And so oh. it's nice to watch the river just like flowing right because it's moving and for me it's just a good re-reminder that something that was there um in one minute is going to be gone the next and just just keep focused on keeping the main thing the main thing and yeah i and love that as i'm listening to your voices they're soothing um, I heard a lot about gratitude. I heard a lot about praying. I heard a lot about outdoors, all the stuff that that is just is so important. People don't understand. And it's so important to when you give yourself away in this fashion, it's so important to leave some in the cup for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not just pour everything out that you have to your no good to yourself, because you can be doing good work as you're doing. But if you're not replenishing yourself, forget about other people. What do you have to give you? So I'm so glad that you all understand and recognize the importance of giving back to yourself so you can be full to give to other people. I have one last um, question, and then I just want to read some comments. I'm a Black doctor, and my Black patients are so appreciative of me and will love to follow this forum. Dr. Serena is my good friend. It's Desi. Ah. <laughs> yes, yes and then pam says dr serena is my cousin and she truly practices what she preaches so, uh and, and it speaks i should say so you got your fan clubs ty tyvoya she said wow this is what me and my doctor i work in healthcare, just had this conversation it's so hard to pour back into yourself when you're caring for 14 to 20 patients a day it is, but it's a, it's, you have to do it. This is a requirement. You have to be able to pour back into yourself as you listen to these, these doctors 
in some type of way. It doesn't have to look the same, but you have to be able to do that. Last question, and then we're out. Um, just a takeaway, if everyone could quickly give a takeaway and then give your information because everybody's already like, I'm calling them. I wrote down all the, the names. My mom's like, you got to do it again. Everybody's like, do it again. Ask them if they know any female um, GPs in uh, Maryland. Um, but I just want to ask the takeaway. So I'm not going to say anything. So I allow everyone to just go after the next, but a takeaway that you want to leave this audience and how they can get in contact with you, social media, websites, whatever you have. If we can do all of that, maybe in 30 seconds. Starting with, um, I'll, I'll go down. I'll start with Dr. Naima and then we'll go up. Awesome. Uh, so I think that the hopefully the, the thing that folks remember the most is that the importance of advocating for yourself and starting with yourself, starting with the things that you have control and uh, power over. And that's just simple choices. And um, Elevate Family Chiropractic on IG and both uh, Facebook is the best way to reach us. Awesome. Um, I was going to actually refer to uh, advocating for oneself okay. as well. Um, but pick something, pick one thing, pick one thing to change um, that's manageable that you can do on a daily basis. Uh, the M Center for Pediatric Wellness I don't even know what our handle is. I think it's the M Center. It's just the M Center. The M Center? The M Center on Instagram. The M Center on Instagram. Instagram. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Partnership. Partnership. I just did a video on my YouTube channel talking about that. Like you can't, you can't reach your fullest potential alone. Mm -hmm. And I did a video on sisterhood. And Dr. Sanza talked about sisterhood and being able all of you, you know, speaking. So I love this. I love your community. I, 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 can I be part of your community even if I'm not a doctor? Come on, girl. Okay. Come on, girl. I want to be on some group chats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Serena. Um, so I think my takeaway would be um, that realize that the mental, emotional, spiritual impact of all of your body systems. So if you don't have that right, your body is going to be right. Mm -hmm. And my website is treat yourself to help. And Instagram, treat yourself to help. Facebook, treat yourself to help. Love that. Thank you. All right. I'm, San I'm Dr. Sansa Curtis. And I, uh, the thing is, is healing yourself three dimensional mind, body, and spirit. And takeaway is don't put nothing on you no more than you can bear. Um, reach out to somebody to your left or your right. And if you need help, um, doesn't have to be medical, but find that community. You can find me on Dr. Sansa, um, doc, uh, Instagram, Dr. Sansa uh, Curtis. And uh, my website is www.3dwellness.com. We also do 15 minute discovery calls. Um, so I'd like to put that out there. Thank you for having us. Dr. Okay. Mark. Okay. Um, so our other, I forgot our other hand, the mwellnesscenter.com is our website, the mwellnesscenter.com. And thank you for reminding us. We do do 30 minute complimentary consults to see if a good fit for you and your family. We do do telehealth. So you don't have to be in Georgia necessarily for us to talk with you. Um, <clears throat> what I would say is also going along the lines of advocating for yourself. If you're not comfortable with your healthcare provider, you don't feel like you're being heard or seen, find another one and do your best to try and find one that looks like you if you can. Okay. Remember the statistics we talked about, the increased risk of, you know, morbidity and mortality just by seeing a doctor that doesn't look like you. We are, we are here. We exist. If you can't come see us, I know someone asked for a provider in Maryland. Dr. Sansa knows somebody, I'm sure. Yeah, Dr. Vanessa Allen. Um, yeah. Boom. Yeah. There you go. And that's how I found Dr. Sansa. Someone mentioned I met her colleague at a conference and, you know, oh, I see you're in Alpharetta, Georgia. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, you Google the, the practice. And I was like, mm, I'm going to go see her. I'm going to the sister. <laughs> I walked in and said, just that. That's why I picked you, girl. All right. Now make 
fix me, make this work. <laughs> I love it. Find somebody that looks like you. I love it. Love you, Dr. Mai. <laughs> That sounds that sounds like something I would have said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's so important. And and I mean, why not say it? Yeah. You know, because that is important. People don't understand. We heard it. Yeah. I don't have to code switch. I can go listen. Let me tell you what's going on with me today. What <laughs> you do you want us? This administration is hard. Right, right, right. And she'd be like, You in danger, girl. You know, she's gonna tell me the way it is. She's not gonna hold anything back. There are no walls, no barriers. I don't have to button up, you know, and I can get yeah. everything that I need. And it's going to be filtered through somebody who's going to do the extra research about what specifically impacts me as a woman and yeah. as a black woman. And there are differences. I went to Howard for medical school, undergrad and medical school. And when they taught us about hypertension or high blood pressure, it was the first line of treatment is this. If they're black, it's this. If they're diabetic, it's this. I don't know if they teach that at other schools at PWI. Ooh. I don't know if they teach it that way. But they made sure we knew that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Maya, before I get to you, Dr. Higgy, we're going to round it out because this will kind of bridge you two. Um, my 23, I have um, two daughters. My youngest daughter is 23. And I had a black OBGYN and I still do different one, right? And I was in labor. My mom is listening. She can attest to this. And she was, she was in there. And I had a black woman. And the way that she yelled at me, she was like, your baby is in danger and you need to push. <laughs> now, I don't know how I would be if that was a white woman yelling at me like that during that time. But she <laughs> yelled at me. She looked in my face. She said, listen, your, your her shoulders are stuck. Your baby is in danger and I'm going to need you to push. I was like, I am pushing. She's like, no, physically push. In my mind, honey, I was pushing. <laughs> But when you just said you're in danger, and that's so important because I got it, you know, and we just have a way with one another that's so valuable. People underestimate that value. It's so valuable. There was Dr. a whole skit on SNL, I think, last weekend where all they said was girl, girl. Oh, girl. And they was, had a whole conversation and all they said was girl and everybody knew what the other person meant. <laughs> Right, it's so true. <laughs> Dr. Higgy, it's true. I'm going to end with the word. We can go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 29th, and to the third, 32nd, but not the full thing. For do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up mm. according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, mm. anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Here it is. This is it. This is my word. Be kind mm. and compassionate to one another. Yeah. Forgiving. That's my other word. Forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. You can find me. Um, um, I, I'm working on my website. Yeah, help me out. Help me out. But um, my office number is 713-571-CARE, 2273. I do virtual care as well in Houston. Um, my office email is twhs380 at sbcglobal.net. You can follow me on Facebook. I'm just Dr. Higgy. Um, on Instagram, I'm just Dr. Higgy. I don't know about the Twitter thing, but um, <laughs> there you go. You don't tweet. She said, you don't tweet. <laughs> be, I'm, uh, be kind. No, no be other kind. Be kind. Right. <laughs> Say no ill will words. No ill will. Yeah. Be okay. kind. We're going to have to teach you how to tweet. We're going to get that website together, honey. We're a sisterhood. We're conglomerate. We're going to make sure you're up and running. <laughs> I, I was hoping that Dr. Monica came back. I'm not sure. Um, she had to go put some, yeah. her, her son had. Oh, okay. Okay. Dr. Well, Higgy they, has to go deliver a baby, too. Yeah. yeah. Do you? Oh, I have I someone in labor. They, she just called. Oh, gosh. And we went over everyone saying do it. Everyone saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. They want us to do it again. We're definitely going to do a part two. I'm going to see what these ladies feel about doing uh, a monthly, you know, maybe a monthly 30 minute or something like that. But we'll do a part two, maybe an hour, hour and a half. We'll figure it out. 
because there's so many questions. I, we can't answer them all, but they gave you their information. So please reach out to them. You heard some of them say that they do telehealth. You don't have to be in their state. They will give you 15 minutes, 30 minutes consultation. So definitely take them up on that offer. They are willing to help assist you. And if you do not in your state, Dr. Stanza already said she knows someone in Maryland, they can connect you because that's what it's about. Ladies, I thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart to help me push this agenda further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for interacting live. It's so important if you like conversations like this to subscribe to my channel. So if you're listening to the sound of my voice, please subscribe to my channel. Like this, share this, comment this, comment to this, allow this to go viral. So many things that are unnecessary in our community go viral. This is something that's extremely important. We're dying y'all just by what we eat and what we don't do with our bodies and the uneducated. Just being ill-informed and uneducated with certain things. We already have food deserts. We already have so much stacked against us in many of these communities. So like they all said, start with small changes and remember that, yeah, money is great. We need money, but our health is our wealth. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Kendall and East Live. This is the panel series. This is a doctor panel right here. I'm just so humble and grateful uh, for this show. Thank you everybody for watching. Remember you are a star. Don't allow anyone to dim your shine. Until next time, God bless. Peace.